Here in the herd, we have 103 animals in milk in lactation. Therefore, we sought a feeding station. In 2022, we installed a station on each side. It keeps dispensing the diet while it is in contact with the ear tag sensor. When the animal leaves, that contact is interrupted and the diet is no longer dispensed. Greater comfort was also provided by the sand bedding. Regarding management, there are three milkings per day. The total herd comprises approximately 200 animals. Average productivity is 51 liters. In recent years, the figures we have achieved are as follows. 2022, 42 liters. 2023, 44.4. 2024, 45.3. And then last year, we had the idea to implement a sound system to play classical music throughout the day. In the sprinkler system, both in the holding area and on the lanes, we have automatic cycles with four minutes of ventilation and 30 seconds of sprinkling. One distinguishing feature of this facility is that Jesse sent a message saying that he won't be making videos anymore because you haven't subscribed to the Santa Fe channel. So subscribe now and he will continue recording on farms around the world. Here we have the holding area, a more spacious holding area with a rapid exit double eight system equipped with a subway. There is a veterinary care and shoot area where we perform hoof trimming. Here we also have the confinement section, which consists of a free stall system with sand bedding. This is where the primiparous and multiparous cows are kept, and they are divided mainly by age, but receive a single dietary regimen. Their supplementation is primarily provided with feed delivered to the stalls. In addition to the lactating cows, we also have the shed, where the prepartum and dry cows are kept in a compost barn system. The main reason for using two systems was to offer an alternative allowing higher stocking density per area in the free stall section, while providing maximum comfort with sand bedding. In the compost barn, cows remain in a more spacious and comfortable environment during the dry and prepartum periods. Therefore, we work in this sector with wood shavings. Here, management involves three milkings per day. We milk at 14.30, 22.30, and 6.30. We always start with group one, which consists of the primiparous cows, followed by group two. This is how the management routines are carried out throughout the day. I am mainly responsible for herd management, and whenever necessary, I also assist with the milking operations and general management tasks. I supervise and support the staff and employees. For feeding, we have a person dedicated exclusively to nutrition management, while those who perform the milking are also responsible for manual cleaning using carts and for leveling and cleaning the sand beds. Hydrated lime is applied to the sand beds three times daily, and the sand is replenished once per week. In addition to these responsibilities, I also carry out hoof trimming of the animals. Until now, we had conducted training for the employees, but over time, as they left, this training was no longer renewed. As a result, I am currently responsible for hoof trimming. We perform hoof trimming on these animals between 130 and 150 days in lactation, and again at drying off, so each animal receives hoof trimming approximately twice a year. One practice I discontinued this year is the use of foot baths. Since we have not experienced further problems with dermatitis or any hoof issues, I have gradually reduced the frequency of foot baths extending the interval to every 14 days, then every 21 days, and now I am no longer performing them. Based on my observations during hoof trimming, I have not noticed any significant difference. I believe that nutrition is adequate, the diet and all nutritional levels are appropriate, and as a result, we have achieved good hoof health, eliminating the need to use foot baths. The cooling system, without a doubt, plays a significant role in ensuring animal comfort, encouraging them to lie down more frequently. The sand bedding system is ideal for providing this type of comfort. Until 2019, we maintained a group with rubber mat bedding and noted a high incidence of hawk injuries. Cows lie down less often, longevity was reduced. In other words, the overall health of these animals was compromised, leading to increased culling rates. Therefore, it was always necessary to anticipate culling, which resulted in considerable losses. I believe that having a cooling system, ensuring animal comfort, and performing appropriate hoof trimming are ideal for achieving the best possible outcomes. For some time,
we performed hoof trimming for the entire herd every four or five months. However, during each of these herd-based trimming sessions, we frequently encountered cases of femoral lameness, which led to the loss of some animals. Consequently, we arrived at the idea, almost out of necessity, to initiate preventive hoof trimming right here on the property, carried out by ourselves. Currently, our herd consists of 103 animals in milking and lactation, and a total of approximately 200 animals in the entire herd. Average milk yield stands at 51 liters. The figures we have achieved in recent years were 42 liters in 2022, 44.4 liters in 2023, 45.3 liters in 2024, 2024, and this year, I believe we will finish with an average of approximately 48 liters. At the beginning of the year, our average was not very high, but I expect that next year it will reach close to 50 liters. Over the last three months, we have managed to achieve an average production of 50.5 liters. The solids average 3.3% protein and 3.7 to 3.8% fat. While these are not particularly high solids content values in terms of milk volume, which is the basis for our payment, the higher yield results and greater productivity. With respect to reproduction figures, our conception rate was around 35% in 2022 and 2023. Now, reviewing the last year, we have achieved rates of 41% to 42%. We do not have an exact value for pregnancy rate, since the herd management software does not provide an accurate figure, partially because the service rate is quite high. This results in a somewhat inflated pregnancy rate value, but it remains above 30 to 35%. Here, we carry out reproduction management and perform pregnancy diagnosis every 28 days in partnership with a veterinarian. Our main protocol is insemination, beginning at 60 days postpartum, which is typically performed by monitoring estrus using the activity monitoring collar we use from Science Hub. Other timed artificial insemination protocols are rarely applied and only in cases where a cow has a cystic ovary, is not cycling properly, or has a substantially extended days in milk period that necessitates intervention for insemination. We mainly use prostaglandin at 60 days when necessary. And for heifers, we use prostaglandin plus estrus detection patch. Thus, administration of prostaglandin and the patch is always based on estrus observation, and inseminations are primarily performed by this method. In 2022, we made two main investments, one of which was the cooling system. We currently have cooling in the alleys in all groups, group one, group two, dry cows, and prepartum cows. Regarding the cooling system, when the temperature exceeds 20 degrees Celsius, cooling is implemented in the holding area and supplemented by alley cooling. In addition to the holding area cooling, the cows are brought here, cooled down, and are cooled again at 10 a.m. and 6.30 p.m. Thus, when temperatures are above 20 degrees Celsius, cows receive five cooling cycles per day. When temperatures exceed 30 degrees Celsius, there are six cycles. At noon, I run the cooling system in the alleys for 45 minutes to an hour on each side so the cows can cool down here. This was an investment that, since 2022, has delivered substantial results. Previously, we had a cooling system, but it was inefficient. The current system, by contrast, has brought significant improvements in productivity, reproductive outcomes, and welfare, as expected and described in numerous scientific studies. In terms of feeding, we have a single diet in the feed bunks, where we mainly use wheat straw, extruded feed, canola, conventional soybean meal, corn silage, wheat silage, wheat straw, cotton seed, and a mix of corn with minerals and other additives. To supplement this diet, as we were experiencing difficulties with supplementing the postpartum and peak yield cows, we sought an automated feeding station. In 2023, we installed one feeding station on each side, and in 2024, we installed an additional one due to the significant competition within the groups. Previously, we had a single station with an auger dispensing the same feed for both groups, postpartum and peak lactation. Since this feed is highly palatable, the animals tend to push each other to have access. Therefore, we needed to add a second station and use the opportunity to provide a different type of feed. Thus, the feed for the postpartum and peak groups was separated. Nevertheless, there are still occasional problems with competition, which is one of the negative aspects of this open system. However, at the same time, we observe significant improvement. 
After the installation in 2023, this system yielded a return of 2 to 5 liters of milk per animal for each kilogram of feed provided. Additionally, in the postpartum period, we noticed a reduction in cases of cysts and anestrus, reproductive performance improved, and the animals lost less body condition during this phase. Therefore, I believe that at a time when we were struggling to supplement, this system allowed us to achieve better balance and adjustment. If it is possible to further divide the groups into postpartum and peak, I believe the results would be equal or superior because in the feeding station, feed is dispensed as long as the ear tag sensor detects the animal's presence. When the animal leaves, the feed supply stops. However, they do not have the same consumption frequency as in the traditional feed bunk. Therefore, this supplementation achieves close to 100% utilization, but it is not as effective as it would be with group allocated feeding, in my opinion. In this setup, the stations are supplied by augers connected to silos. There is a postpartum feed silo and a peak lactation feed silo. These augers feed the stations, depositing the feed into the black tubes above the station. And an internal auger inside the station dispenses the feed. Each dispensing pulse is calibrated as the system does not weigh feed, but rather releases a predetermined mass per pulse according to the feed's density. This calibration is set in the Dell Pro software, determining how much concentrate each cow is allowed to consume. Here, intake ranges from 1 kilogram up to 8 or 9 kilograms, depending on productivity, as managed by Dell Pro. Regarding diet formulation, we have the assistance of Ranieri, who monitors especially the stations. We're achieving a balance between the amount of fiber in the total diet and the concentrate provided is challenging. Therefore, the forage NDF is higher in the main feed bunk, allowing us to use slightly more concentrate in the station without issues. Ranieri's work is particularly valuable because he assesses fiber fractions, also through compositional analyses, to ensure that diet software values match what is actually being provided. In the cubicle area, we experienced a side effect, so to speak, a problem where, due to competition in an open system, stress among the animals began to arise. This was particularly evident among the multi-parous cows, where we observed animals injuring each other. Last year, we had the idea of implementing a sound system to play classical music during the day. It has now been operating for nearly a year, playing classical music, mainly piano, cello, and violin pieces by well-known composers such as Beethoven, Mozart, among others, from 6 a.m. until midnight. The results observed include a substantial reduction in animal stress. The animals are no longer as aggressive towards each other as they once were. However, no perceptible changes were noted in behavior in the milking parlor or in productivity. Nevertheless, herd behavior within the free stall has improved considerably. Currently, the music is not being played due to YouTube copyright restrictions, which can cause interruptions. However, as we move forward, we intend to resume daily music use as was customary.